Today we're going to talk about what makes a game successful and competitive in esports. Okay, so first of all, when you're talking about a good video game, you have, obviously you need to have good design, right? But good design and a good game is not enough to make a game popular because there are tons and tons of good games out there that won't make it in esports. Games that are meant to make it in esports that will not make it. There's a formula that designers need to focus on in addition to just a game being designed well that they need to focus on in order to make sure that their game is successful. And even doing all these, obviously, you know what? There's some luck involved, so you can never guarantee it. But I do want to talk about some of these qualities that can make a game successful in esports because I think it's very important for students, designers, and other people who are thinking about creating a game to know about if they're looking to go and do this. All right, so let me go through my list and tell you the things that will help ensure that a game is successful. All right, so the first thing that I wanna talk about, developer support. You've gotta have solid developer support. You know how many games or apps that I like will download on my phone or something like that, that like the last update was a year ago? Notice how World of Warcraft League of Legends weekly, 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 weekly updates. Developer support. That is developer support. And people complain that that's not enough. Now obviously those are huge games with big budgets, so they're able to do things like have those weekly updates, but showing developer support, support is a must for the community to respond well to your game, especially when there are problems, they are fixed promptly. All right, next thing. The game is easy to learn difficult to master. Easy to learn, difficult to master. Someone needs to be able to pick up this game and figure it out pretty quick. And if it's the game where they can't, like a lot of the new first person shooters that come out that might not be super, super easy with lots of guns, buttons and stuff. For example, I just use Apex Legends and Valorant. Both of them had training when you first started the game to teach you like, well, here's how you jump and shoot and aim and do some of the basics. Whereas a game like Mario Kart, you can really pick up. But if a game is super complicated, it's very difficult to get into and establish a large player base. That doesn't say it doesn't that's not to say it doesn't happen, because it does, um, but the easier it is for someone to pick up the game and use it, the better chance of success you have. All right, next thing. When I said easy to learn, difficult to master, it's very difficult to be in the top players. You can always consistently grow, consistently learn. So it's very difficult to be in that top percentage. Um, and to go along with that, the outcome of the game depends on skill, not luck. If the game outcome depends on luck, people are going to get angry um, when they're a better player and they lose because of something that in-game glitch or something like that that happened. So the game depends on skill. You know, one of my favorite games that is so skill-based that I just, I love the skill level involved with Halo 3. And I, I know I mentioned this game in a bunch of my videos, sorry. I do love the game and it is 100% so much skill involved in that game, I just love the way it was set up. <laughs> All right, next thing, prize money. Prize money is a motivation for people to want to focus on and play that game. How much prize money? If a game has no prize money, are people going to focus? Whereas if uh, people know that, hey, there's a $15 million, you know, prize at the end here, it's kind of like, you know, someone chasing the carrot, like they're going to chase it. So how much prize money is involved? And that shows what kind of support the game has too. Like, did those developers have a significant amount of funding and backing to really make sure this game is going to be successful in esports competition? Because when there's competitions for the game, people are going to play it so that they can win those prizes and get known. Um, next thing, the game has to be appealing for a streaming audience. You know, according to certain reports, around 40% of people watching streams don't actually play the game. Um, so you need to make a game appealing, like appealing games like League of Legends and other games that have a good, you know, overall view. You know, League of Legends can be viewed similar to like a football game, whereas other games can't be viewed like that. And it does hurt how well they perform in esports as far as like viewership and numbers go. Next thing, there needs to be some kind of infrastructure for tournaments, whatever that is, whether that's a tournament, a league. Um, notice how the bigger game companies like Blizzard and Riot are purposely sponsoring their own leagues and tournaments for their games to A, put that prize money into them and set up an infrastructure where there's going to be tournaments for that game so people can and will compete. And it's consistently on the map of something that's upcoming. 
Uh, next thing, game must have a some kind of spectator mode. The reason there's a spectator mode so that A, people can watch it, people can be coached playing it, and it's much easier to stream when there's some kind of spectator mode. This is something that's greatly important to a game for it to be successful. And the final thing, and really you need all of these things plus this, for a game to make it in competitive gaming, and that is a good large player base, which obviously doesn't just happen when you're a small, you know, indie developer. It's very difficult, whereas a company like Blizzard, when they put out a game, can get a significant player base from the start. And if a company like Blizzard uses the formula that I've just presented here, it's much easier for them to create a good competitive game than someone just starting out. But those are my tips for, you know, qualities that a game must have in order for it to be competitive, especially as you look at like the longevity of any game that has been competitive for a long time. Take Overwatch, take League of Legends, take, Rocket League, any game that it has had a Counter-Strike, that has had a significant, um, you know, long run in competitive gaming has had all of these qualities for the most part. Um, so consider that when you're talking about like, well, you know, if you're ever talking to a client, you're ever talking to someone and you're like, well, what, what, what will make our game stand out? What will make it competitive? This is a good list to start from. Thanks all.